Hi, welcome to the Conducting a Literature Review uh, Lecture. This is the part one of um, three different parts for this lecture. And this is uh, coming from part two or chapter two from our textbook. So our objective for this lecture is to help you understand the purpose of conducting the literature review that you would do in your assignment as part of your research paper assignment. I'd like to review our steps of research because I think it's always good to go back to understand where we are in the research process. We have nine different steps. The first step is identify a research problem or a research topic. Uh, chapter two does a good job describing how you go about doing that in chapter two in our textbook <clears throat> and chapter two also talks about reviewing the literature which is the step we're at in this particular part of our class after we do a literature review we develop a hypothesis which we'll talk about more uh, later in our course and then from our hypotheses we specify a purpose for the research where I call it developing a purpose statement. Again, we'll talk about that uh, later in this course where you will actually develop a hypothesis, a research, uh, excuse me, a purpose statement and a research question. And then our fifth step is developing uh, definitions, delimitations, limitations, and assumptions. Again, we'll talk about that later. Our sixth step is to develop methods to test our hypothesis. So we've developed a hypothesis. So we have to figure out how do we test that hypothesis through uh, appropriate research methods. Obviously, that's what this majority of this class is about. And then we develop our methods. After we develop the methods, we collect the data. We actually do our study. That's step seven. And step eight, we, after we've collected the data, we have to analyze what it means and then interpret what it means. That's in analyzing and interpreting the data. And our final step is reporting it or writing a paper uh, for our publication, reporting and evaluating the research. So after we've interpreted data, we write it up, we tell others about what we found and what does it all mean? What's the implications and inferences that we take back to the general population um, with our research. So again, in this series of lectures, we're going to spend all our time in reviewing the literature. So Thomas Nelson and Silverman on pages 45 and 347, I have a, I thought it was a good succinct um, reason why we do a literature review. And they said, in quote, uh, the purpose of the literature review is to demonstrate that your problem needs investigation and that you have considered the value of the relevant past research in developing your hypotheses and methods. You know and understand what other people have done and how that relates to and supports what you plan to do. And I think that's uh, that quote is critical because it has some key elements in there. The one One of them is that there is a need to do this study that you're doing because the previous research has not actually answered that research question or tested that hypothesis. You also need to know and understand what everybody else in the past has already done. So in reality, what happens is that you become the research or expert in the area along with the other people who have done research. And then what has been done previously needs to support and uh, relate back to your particular research topic and your research questions, purpose statement, and hypothesis. Uh, they have to be linked to, to one another. I mean, it's again, it's uh, a no-duh type thing that the literature that you have done should be related to your research topic in the first place. Uh, you wouldn't write 
or have material in a literature review that has something to do with sports medicine and you're doing a PE research study, more than likely. Some more stuff that will help you with your literature review and the purpose of a literature review. What we want to do when we actually start our literature review is that we go from a really big picture and uh, connect the dots or make it even smaller. We, uh, let's say our research, question, our research topic is uh, strength training. That's very big. Now we need to get it very narrow. Uh, I'll talk about more of that in our uh, lecture later. Our literature review is really the heart of our paper. If we're talking about anatomy, uh, it's the heart, and we can actually probably even say it's the brain of our paper. But in, in using the heart, that means that um, it's the most important thing in a research study, a thesis, dissertation. Now, what's the difference between a thesis and a dissertation? A thesis is for uh, master students like yourself that conduct a research study and that is usually based off previous students or previous research where a dissertation is typically done at the doctoral level and it has to be original research what what that means is nobody else has done a study like that uh, you're the first researcher that will conduct a study in that particular area and with a thesis for a master's student it's not original research it's it can be a copy of pre previous research. For a journal article thesis and a dissertation, it, it's the, the literature review is the thing that drives the research. It has to uh, tie everything together. It ties everything into the research problem and it also helps develop uh, the uh, conclusions at the end of your paper. As uh, third bullet says, you are the expert in the area. By doing a literature review, by the time you have finished writing a literature review, you should be the expert in this particular area, whatever that area is. Now let me say something here. Uh, this literature review is not just for uh, this class. It's not just for research, uh, for a thesis or a dissertation. And it's not just uh, for um, if you're going to do be a researcher, you know, full time, like a college professor. A lot of the steps that I'm talking about in this particular lecture series can be a, applicable, it is applicable to assignments in our uh, grad program when you're asked to uh, write a paper. We, we are assuming that you're writing research papers, and the term research may not necessarily be in the assignment description, but at the heart of all our assignments, especially our signature assignments in our grad program, we are expecting you to locate acceptable uh, research papers, or we'll call them primary sources later in this uh, lecture series, and to use them and also to become an expert in these areas. That is expected for all our classes, but it's not only just for this academic area. Let's say that at your job, you're, you are asked to uh, investigate something. You should go to the literature and see what it says. In the area that I'm an expert in, which is athletic training, uh, the athletic training profession and all medical professions, we use, use what's called evidence-based uh, medicine or evidence-based practice. And what that means is that we should use the research in our medical area to drive the way that we take care of our patients. Why are we doing the particular treatments or rehab for our student athletes or our patients? Is it just because we've always done it that way? Or are we doing it because the literature shows that we should be doing it that way? And for our grad program, when you're writing a particular paper, not just for this class, but in any class in general, um, you should be using what I call evidence-based uh, academics to support your thoughts and what you're doing. And that goes along with this whole particular lecture series 
on developing a literature review. So you become an expert in the area. You must read, uh, of course you're gonna read your material and understand the related literature. Now there's an article that I've placed in the course documents on how you read journal articles. I really suggest that you download that. It's uh, helpful, I think, um, and understanding how to read journal articles. Uh, I know it's pretty difficult sometimes to understand some of the statistics and those type of things, but um, I think most of us should be able to read the introduction of a paper and eventually you're gonna be able to understand the methods because of this course, then you should be able to understand the conclusions in the discussion section. Because most of the time the authors get rid of all the statistical information that's kind of confusing for all of us. The other thing that our literature review does, it helps identify the problem. What What is the problem? Uh, you have a topic, you st we're, we've asked you to pick a topic, but now we need to narrow that down. And how we narrow that down is through the literature review. What has been done in the past and what uh, is still missing? Um, and that's part of the developing the hypothesis. A hypothesis is just an educated guess. And we base it on what's been previously found. And then if we think about the research question or the um, thing that we're trying to narrow down with our problem is uh, what do we expect to happen if we do this particular study? If we have this independent variable and these dependent variables and we do this study with these subjects or participants, what do we expect to happen? That is a hypothesis. We make an educated guess based on a previous research on what we expect to happen. The other thing that our literature review does, it helps us develop the methods, our research methods. Uh, what, how have other researchers actually conducted the research? For our uh, class assignment, this will be helpful when you are developing your research paper on developing your methods. Obviously, I've placed a lot of emphasis in the methods section in that assignment and have given it a lot of point value uh, because this is a research methods course. So I want you to um, tie the research method for your uh, purpose statement and your research question and hypothesis to your methods. That should be the correct method to a test to test the hypo hypo hypothesis that you have uh, written. So these previous research studies that you are reading about should give you help on how you should conduct the research. Uh, if they've been published, that's probably acceptable methodology. So this ends our first part of this particular uh, lecture. And as a summary, we, uh, we asked, why do we even conduct a literature review? We conduct a literature review to help us with very many things, as I said earlier, um, to help us write our purpose statement, our research question, our hypothesis, to develop methods, for you to become an expert in an area, for you to help you write research uh, papers or uh, in this program and help you with your work, and to also help you um, become a scholarly practitioner in our area of kinesiology.